Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at T-Swift software for Ice River CASPA ASICs. It is the Ice River monitoring tool. You may have seen this already being used by Red Panda the other day. He released a video when he was having problems with his KS3M, I believe, that uh, Ice River did a really crap job on uh, thermal pasting a bunch of the chips in his ASIC. Well, this is now open to the public. You can now use it. And he's still actively developing it and fixing bugs, adding features to it. But basically, you want to go to, at least at the moment, HTTPS T.ME backslash Swift underscore mining underscore 2587. This is his latest bit of information for it. But every single update will revert back to 2441. That's the one you want to go to. So if we click that, every time he releases a new version, it will be in this URL. So I will have this URL down in the video description below. And every time he updates it, it will always update this link right here. Uh, the instructions is very simple. Just download the file, unzip the folder, run the ice river underscore monitor dot exe application. Do not remove the application from the folder and files that it is with. The way he has the program structure it needs all those dll's and everything else right at that same location or it just won't work also shows temperature for those chips uh basically it's the same for the ks0 uh, all the way up to the ks3s uh if they get anywhere around 95 c that is when they start throttling and they should be running well below that like 80 c max should be pretty good uh if it goes 100 plus c you're damaging the chips at that point yeah and your ASIC will probably shut down. So if you see 100 plus, immediately just pull the power and fix whatever the problem is, whether it be new thermal paste or new pads or something. Something's wrong and you're going to kill your ASIC. He also recommends using Arctic MX6 for the thermal paste. I was using Prolima Tech PK3 on mine and I've had basically the same results you can get either which one you want i'm not going to put up a product for amazon on this video uh pick whichever one you like but definitely get a higher quality thermal paste for repacing your unit now his software also shows you what the voltage is on each asic chip and apparently from what he's saying if the voltage ever exceeds 520 millivolts or 0.52 volts um you will start getting degradation on the silicon of the chip itself. You want to stay basically below a half a volt on those chips. You can't control it, but it's a nice way to monitor it, and you might need to ask for help from T-Swift or someone else in the community. Why is my chips running so high on the voltage at that point? So it's, it's just a nice monitoring tool right there. Next part is the clock, also known as frequency that the chips are actually running at. Now, see, he's, I've tried his newest software, and it says right here, the KS0 Pro chip temperature readings are not accurately parsed by the miner. The intake exhaust readings are fine. They'll do a custom fix for this soon. But I will show you in a minute when we take a look at my modified KS0 Pro. I think the numbers are actually right. And he may be referring to people who are still running the stock firmware. I'm running uh, T-Swiss, which may work correctly. And he's got more options that he's going to be adding soon. So let's go up to the top here and download it. Unfortunately, it's not the best download site. There are pop-ups and stuff like that, but I really haven't had too much of a problem. You don't want to click up here. That's an ad. The Ice River Monitoring.zip file. That's what you want. Just click download. It's loading this up, close this freaking thing, because that's probably more spam crap from having a free upload place. And more spam crap. So, T-Swift, you need to find a better download site. Other than that, it's okay. We've had this independently tested. There are no malware or viruses or keyloggers that have been noticed, at least from the first version. So, now that it's downloaded, let's go to File Explorer. Downloads. Ice River Monitor. And let's just extract Oh, wait, hold on. So while it's copying to my downloads folder and unzipping, here's a quick word from another crypto project I really like.
You know quantum computers. You know blockchain. But do you know both together? Dynex was the first platform to create a neuromorphic supercomputing blockchain-based algorithm which solves real-world problems. And the best part? Anyone can post a job, whether a company from the Global 2000, a machine learning job, or fintech and pharmaceutical. And if you don't want to program it yourself, get an expert directly at the marketplace. Run the job and be impressed by the fast result. Okay, so we have the folder unzipped. Click right in here. These are all the different language folders. You don't have to worry about any of that. Just scroll down until you get the ice river underscore monitor. Double click that. Go into more info and run anyway. Now we're going to need the IP address, the local IP address of your KS0. So let's take a look at my KS0 first, just the regular KS0, not the pro. And get the local IP address. Let's copy that. So we're going to put that IP address in this location now. And where it says minor type, we're going to switch this to just regular KS0. And just click read. And there it is. Four chips, only one board. And we can see the temperature on each one. 55, 55, 53, 56. Perfect. No problems whatsoever. And this is running 144 giga hash. This has one of the regular free overclocks on it. We can also see the voltage of each chip. They are below 0.5 volts. They're good. And we can see the clock speed too. Also gives you current stratum information. Accepted. So if I scroll over more. Nope. Oh, okay. It doesn't show rejected. But they'll show you accepted. Uh, it does give you your averages, your chip minimum, chip maximum, chip average, chip voltage, uh, your temperature for the board, input and output, and your hash rate averages. Tells you your firmware version. I'm running the 150 giga hash firmware on this uh, KS0. And current fan speeds. And your runtime. Perfectly good. Now, let's jump over to my KS0 Pro. This is 237. Switch this to KS0 Pro, and let's read that. And you can see we have 12 chips for the KS0 Pro. And this is running the 280 giga hash T-Swift firmware on it. And we can see the temperature on all the chips. I got one warm chip here, 51C, but that's stretching it. Everything else is running mid to upper 40Cs. It's perfectly fine, especially for the hash rate and the wattage is pulling. I think it's pulling like 150 watts right now. Voltages are perfect. 0 0.42, 0 0.43. Um, yeah, we haven't even hit 0.44. So there's plenty of headroom left in these chips. Now, I do want to go and try out T-Swiss 340 giga hash overclock. But there's one problem if you can look at this software that I need to fix before I try going any further than 280 giga hash. Chip temperatures are perfectly fine. The voltages are fine. The board temperature input is perfectly fine. This is my problem right here. I already put the little tiny copper heat sinks on the uh, power stage MOSFETs on the board itself, and that allows it to at least run. It doesn't overheat, keeps the MOSFETs from overheating, but there's not a lot of headroom. That This board out temperature, even with a fan blowing through it, because I have it sitting right over here on the side, um, yeah, it's just enough to keep it from shutting itself down because something's overheating. So in the next video, we are going to modify some more the KS0 Pro and get it ready. Get this number down so we can actually attempt and try 340 giga hash overclock. So thanks for watching. That's all I got for this video. Please subscribe if you're not. So this way you can catch the next video when I do some more modifications to my KS0 Pro and hopefully push it to 340 giga hash.